This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Indeed, he is in his holy temple. With the affirmation of faith, what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, ascended at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence it shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, sin, and the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. This time we're going to have a word from the choir. We're going to have them to come and sing. We're going to ask God. Uh, Reverend Bankhead to come and do the prayer, and then we're going to have the scripture by our pastor, and we're just thanking God today, amen? Give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
eternal God, I would love it to help the Father. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm most glad that you have granted us the privilege to come into your house once more time. And we thank you, Lord, for this privilege. We thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have showered down upon us your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for a real person health and strength. Thank you, Lord, that we were able to open our eyes this morning and see a day which you've never seen before. Thank you that we could move our bodies, our hands, our feet, our limbs, and Lord, and everything was working very well. Thank you, Lord, that when we looked around, we seen that everyone doing very well. Mm -hmm. There were no hurt wheels rolling. There was no call from some friend, neighbor, family members mm -hmm. saying someone had passed away. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just thank you for all your many blessings. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We can't thank you enough. That the psalmist says, my, the pray, our praise shall ever be on our tongue of thee, O Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for the fellowship of brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus this morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the one that you have sent here to preach your divine word. Mm -hmm. And we pray as we stand before us this morning and declare your word that our hearts will be open, our minds will be regulated to receive your divine word. And after we receive that, we will govern ourselves accordingly. We pray that if someone here that don't know you in the pardon of sin, that they will come confessing, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. We come, if there's someone here who needs our healing touch, mm -hmm. that you will touch them this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me. Thank you, O oh Lord, for healing my body and bringing the relief that you have given me. Thank you, O oh Lord, for our knee replacement that you have made a success. We give you the glory and we give you the honor. We pray, O oh God, that you will help us to continue to praise and worship you until you say it's enough done over here. Mm -hmm. Then, Lord, we pray for those who bereaved this morning mm -hmm. for the loss of loved one. Yes. For there are many, Lord. Yes. We don't know them all by name, mm -hmm. but you know them all. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lord, help us all to know that we're just pilgrims traveling through this land. Mm -hmm. And one day, sooner or later, we must quit this walk of life. Mm -hmm. Then, Lord, when it's yours to call and our answer, receive our soul unto your kingdom, where we can be in our presence throughout eternity, ever more praise in thee, knowing that you are worthy. You, you have the power of glory, you have the might, you have everything. All is yours and belongs to you, and we give you that recognition, and we give you that praise. And we thank you, Lord, thank you. for all that you have done, is done, and we'll do on our behalf. We ask in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and for his sake. Amen. amen. Church, say amen. amen. Let us say amen again. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. We, we stand now to bring scripture uh, this morning before the choir comes back again. Our scripture reading will be coming from 1 John uh, chapter number 1. And we will read it in its entirety uh, from 1 John chapter 1, the first epistle of John, chapter 1. And we will read it in its entirety, which is 10 verses. And the scripture reads, That which we from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show it unto you this eternal life, 
which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. So if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Amen. May God bless his word, for this is God's word for God's people, and the people of God say it, amen, amen. Now we will hear from the choir. <laughs>
if you need somebody, you can count on me. Somebody said praise is what I do. I want to be close to you. Lord, I praise you at all times. I want to praise you because I realize that you inhabit the praises of your people. And I know that we ought to be willing to praise if nothing else because you got an extra hour of sleep. Amen. If nothing else because God has been good to you. Somebody say, matter of fact, that he's been better to me than I've been to myself. So we're grateful today just to be able to be seen. You go to people a lot of times and you say, good to see you. And instead of them saying, good to see you too, they say, well, it's good to be seen. Amen. So we thank God today and we, we lift him up this first Sunday in the month of November. Our Sunday for the celebration of Holy Communion. The first Sunday, a new beginning. Every time God allows us a new day, it's a new beginning. So we give honor to our Heavenly Father today who doeth all things well. We give honor to his only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, who is our Redeemer. Yes, sir. We give honor to his precious Holy Spirit, who is our sustainer. For the Bible says he will keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him to these preachers to Pastor Grissom, Pastor Bankhead Reverend Jones to all of the officers and members and friends of Jackson Chapel to this choir to those of you that are watching out in social media via Facebook it's good for us to assemble one more time. Today we want you to just for a few moments turn your attention to the seventh chapter of Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter seven. And we will begin with verse number 12. And we're only going to read a couple of verses, but our message for today will be coming from verses 12 through verse 20. But for reading purposes, we're only going to read the 12 through the 14th and then we will finish throughout our message. And the scripture reads, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, 
and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. May God bless his word. For this is God's word for God's people. And let us pray. Father God in heaven, we come once again as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. Asking you, Heavenly Father, to have your way in this place. I ask you now, Lord, to allow David to decrease that you may increase. Take me and hide me behind your cross that you may show up. For as we stand, we realize that it's not about us but it's all about you. Speak to us. Speak to us right now. That your spirit move. That your word will go out and touch these, your people. And that they may write it upon the tablets of their hearts. And that they may live and grow thereby. Now, Father, I ask you to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you, Lord, are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name they said, Amen. Amen. As we come this morning for an introduction. Everything in life seems to be conditional. For example, whenever you set out to make a major purchase, that major purchase is accompanied by a contract or an agreement. But is it not amazing that when it comes to something that we want, we don't mind sitting down and signing that contract? No matter what the fine print may say, no matter what the terms and conditions are, no matter what it entails, we don't mind locking ourselves in as long as it's something that we want. At some point, if you adhere to the terms and conditions, you become the proud recipient of benefits that come along with keeping the contract. If you've ever paid off a car, or if you ever paid off a house, or if you paid off some other item, uh, I can imagine that it was a good feeling once you received your ownership papers and said that you are the proud owner because you kept the contract. But the only way that, that this happens is that we understand the terms and the conditions. One word that an agreement rides on is mentioned 1,673 times in the English Standard Version of the Bible. It's mentioned 1,588 times in the American Standard Version of the Bible. It's mentioned 1,670 times in the modified King James Version of the Bible. Somebody wondering what this word is. This one word is what all contracts are based on. This one word is small, but it binds all agreements. This one word which states all claims, though it may be small, 
It's the glue that holds everything together. This one word that I speak of is if. So if I can use for a thought this morning, I want to talk to you for just a few moments the concept of if. The concept of if. As we explore our text, this mysterious word that I mentioned that uh, is 1,588 times in one version, 1,673 times in another, 1,670 times in another, is such a small word, but it carries a whole lot of power. For in our text, the 13th verse begins by saying, If I shut up heaven, where there will be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, this denotes that in order for something to happen, something else has to happen first. With every promise that God made, there is a condition. Am I right? In the 11th and 12th verse of the chapter, it speaks to us about when Solomon had finished the house of the Lord. The Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Now I want us to think about that because as we look around, we, we find that, that Jackson Chapel has a long history. Am I right? Uh, uh, I, I can remember the old church that used to sit down the road and the old church that had the wooden floor, the old church that had the hard benches, the, the old church that had the, the, the wooden stove, the old church that used to have the fans in the windows. I remember the old church. But I will stop by to tell us today that it was not about the building, but God said, I established this with this covenant that you would be my place of <laughs> listen to me. My place of residence. I will be with you. If you do what? Follow my Ordinances. Verse 13 denotes what happens if the conditions and terms are broken. We see that God established a covenant or an agreement with Solomon, but he had conditions that came along with the covenant. Somebody say, well, what do we do? God said, as long as you do right, right to follow. All right. But if you do not follow my ordinances, then there will be consequences. Let me say that one more time. If you do right, that word if, if you do right, then right will follow you. But if you don't do right, there are consequences. Notice he said I'll send pestilence. If we are shut up heaven, if I allow the locusts to devour the land because of disobedience. He said that all of this is because of you. Now, have you ever wondered why you have to go through certain things in life? Have you ever wondered why, uh, like the old song said, if it wasn't for bad luck, I would have no luck at all? Have you ever stopped to wonder, what if I just did right, instead of always trying to do wrong? Paul said that even when I choose to do the right thing, Evil is present on every hand. So what Paul was saying here, I may as well choose to do right because evil is always present. But if I do right, I have a blessing that's waiting for me. 
Now look at what God says. He said, now even though the pestilence might come, even though you may have to wear your mask, I wish I had somebody. Even though you may have to keep six foot distance, even though you may have to worship uh, in, in a spread out type of environment, even though things have changed, he said, if you would keep my word, he said, if my people, I'm talking about us. He, he, he's not talking about uh, the folk that uh, are not called. But he said, if my people who are called by my name will offer themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked way. Now we heard if. He said, now if you do this, he said, then. Somebody not hearing me. He said, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins. And he said, and I will heal their land. But see, we're still wondering why that we haven't received our healing. Well, I, I stopped by to tell the reason why, because at somewhere down the line, we don't read and, and understand what the term turn means. Uh, it's not, see, when you turn, that means that you go a different Direction. Turn does not mean just veer. Turn means that you got to turn and go a different direction. He said, if you would turn from your wicked ways, if you would do this, if you, I will forgive you of your sins. Yeah, we read in 1 John 1 and 9. He said, if you confess your sins, that he's just, huh? And he will do what? Forgive you of all your sins and do what? Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But, but what we keep missing is the concept of if. We trying to make if be maybe. We trying to make if be probably. But the concept of if means we got to make a change. He says, will I, then will I hear from heaven? And Kate, I started to think about this, hear from heaven. I said, now Jesus is already in heaven. Now what is he talking about? God is already in heaven. What is he talking about, Brother Frank? I'm trying to figure this out. And I, I started to punt on this thing. He said, I will hear from heaven. And I it ain't better. I'm going to tell you what I found. He said, well, we're going to have a conference. The Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost going to look down and see that the people's hearts, their minds, their lifestyles, their ways have changed. And then we're going to put out the decree that said my folk have made their change and then we're going to heal their land. The term of agreement, first of all, is between God and those who are called by his name. The concept of it does not know, denote that there is any compromising circumstances. The concept of it does not denote that there is any room for negotiation. The concept of ill, saying that you're going to either do it or you're not. The concept of ill denotes that there has to be some life-altering uh, situations. Yes, Whereas what used to be won't be no more. In the final verse of our text, we find final verses of our text, we find other conditions. In verse 15, God says, now my eyes shall be open, and my ears will be attentive to your prayer. 
that is made in this place. Then he follows up in the 16th verse by denoting another condition. He said, for now, uh-oh, he said, for now, as long as you do it right, for now, I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Then come the conditions of the contract. God says to Solomon, as for you. See, this is where somebody that was here last week, this is where it become personal. He said, as for you. Somebody look at somebody and say, as for you. If you walk before me as your daddy David walked, yes, and do according to all that I have commanded you, and observe my statutes and my judgments, if you do these things, if you walk, if you do according to David, if you do according to as I have commanded you, the concept of if means that these conditions will only happen if you do what I say. He said, if you do these things, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom. But if you don't, there will be consequences. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes, if you turn away and forsake my commandments that I have set before you, if you go and serve other gods and you start to worship them, he said, now just like I planned it, he said, I will pluck them up by the roots All right. yes, out of my land, which I have given them. And this house, which I have sanctified. See, somebody think that it'll stay sanctified well, if it started out sanctified. Well, but you just like anything else, if you put in the wrong thing, if you start messing with what God has already fixed, right. if you start trying to do things against what God has commanded, when your way of worship is no longer pleasing to God, right. he said, I will pluck them up by the roots out of my hand, and this house which I have sanctified for my name I will cast out of my sight. I'm just wondering here today, has anybody just sit back and wondered why America uh, is falling so fast? Why are God's people and God's churches are going from the top down to the bottom? Well, the reason why is because the concept of ill. Because God said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Uh, am I getting ready to bring this thing to a close? In the time that we have explored the concept of ill. We have found that it is a word that carries a big punch. If we are looking for a healing, then we need to look to God. If we are looking for a change, we need to look to God. If we are looking for peace, we need to look to God. If we are looking for joy, uh, we need to look to God. For God is uh, 
the author and the finisher of our faith. If you are looking for a new beginning, what he said is, you will just change and turn from your wicked ways. Uh, he will uh, make a way now. Uh, out of no way now. Uh, ain't going all right now. Uh, I'm so glad today now uh, that all I got to do now uh, is turn now. Uh, look unto God now. Uh, for he is uh, he's my joy now. Uh, Jesus, he said, let not 
your heart be strong. So you believe in God, believe also in me. He's our goal to prepare a place for you. But see, somebody just missed this part. He said, but if I go and prepare a place for you, guess what? I will come again and receive you unto myself. Then where I am, then where I am, then where you may be also. The concept of if. We all just think about it. What if I just did things differently? What if I just try to do better than what I've been doing? There's no need to be stuck in our old ways. Our old ways has gotten us to this point. Our old ways, God said it right here. He said, my people got to change first. They're in there every Sunday morning, but there ain't no changes being made. They're in there week after week, but they still are not turning. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves in prayer and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, he said, then will I hear from heaven. Not before, but when. He said, when that happens, he said, then. Well, I hear from heaven. And there's a twofold blessing. He said, I'll what? I'll forgive their sins. See, because they had to come first. Folk had to stop acting crazy. Are y'all gonna hear me? He said, then after that, after they stop acting crazy, after I forgive them, he said, then I'll heal them. Oh man, I belong that mercy. The healing will come if we understand the concept of if. The doors are open. The doors are open. The doors are open. We extend now the invitation of Christian discipleship. We extend the opportunity there may be someone here today they're saying, what if I make my decision today? What if I decide that today is my day? What will happen? Well, the Bible says they're rejoicing in heaven over one that repents. They're rejoicing in heaven because God wants his people to change. That God wants his people to be saved. The Bible says it's not, not his desire that any man should perish. But he knew that someone would because that's why there is a heaven and there is a hell. But it's not his desire that anybody go down. He wants everybody to go up. So it's your choice. What if I made that choice today? What if I decided to change my mind? Today is your day. There be one. We be that you come. Be one. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for giving us an opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for sharing with us today what you require of us. That our minds will be changed. That our lives will be transformed. For I found out that if I trust you, you will provide. Lord, we thank you now. Father, we pray now that there be someone out there today, someone that has listened, someone that has tuned in on, on Facebook or where have you, that this invitation has touched our hearts. We pray, God, that there 
life will change and they will come running to you saying I once was lost but now I'm found I was blind but now I see we give thanks to you now we give thanks to you now for being who you are Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. The church say amen. amen. Let us say amen again. Amen. The concept of gift. As mentioned, 